and welcome to this session, Robots Are Your Friends, Keeping Your Operators Up to Date with Automation. I will introduce myself and the provider packages in case you're unfamiliar. I'll tell you what my life was like before my robot friends and what it is like with my robot friends. And don't worry, I will make all of the code available to you afterwards. So hi, I'm Leah. I'm a developer relations engineer working on Google Cloud Composer, which is GCP's hosted managed version of Airflow. I'm also an Airflow committer. I am a white woman, and today my hair is pulled back, and I have blue glasses, and I'm speaking to you from my home office in California. OK, so what are these provider packages I mentioned? Previously, all of the operators were packaged and released with regular releases of Airflow. If you wanted the latest version of an operator, you would upgrade to the latest version of Airflow. This was a pain point for a lot of Airflow users, and so an AIP, or an Airflow Improvement Proposal, was introduced which proposed splitting the operators into groups that are released on separate release cycles from regular Airflow. Uh, this change didn't happen right away because it was very, very big, uh, but it did happen as part of Airflow 2.0, and I'm so excited. So now, if you want the latest version of certain operators, you can get it, even if you don't have exactly the same latest version of Airflow. And there are some limitations, but they're documented. And these packages, they're called provider packages because they are grouped by providers. So an example of a provider are the cloud providers like GCP, AWS, and Azure, and other software providers like Snowflake or Slack or Salesforce. There are a lot of them. Um, and it's not limited just to the ones that I mentioned. There are also what are called backport packages, which are these provider packages that have been made backwards compatible with some of the later releases of Airflow 110, the ones that are leading up to Airflow 2. So with that in mind, uh, I like to, well, as part of my job, I have to keep the Google Cloud Composer samples up to date with latest Airflow. And I always want to make sure that they are compatible. And I like to keep my, my environments up to date. So what that looked like before my robot friends with these provider packages was a provider package would be released. I would do my best keeping out for updates. And then I would be like, oh, a new package came out. I should see if my samples are still working, that there were no breaking changes. And if there's no breaking changes, I will add it as a Python module in my dev Airflow Composer environment. And assuming all of my DAGs are fine, then I will promote it to my prod samples environment. OK, so this isn't terrible, especially because this flow has me running tests and using a dev prod environment. But it is extremely reliant on me, a human, to A, notice that there was a release, and B, do all of those steps without making a mistake. And let's be real. I, I'm not perfect, believe it or not. And I could use some help. So this is where my robot friends help me get this done a lot more reliably and efficiently, because I have a lot on my plate. I'm going to show you what my repo looks like, and we'll build on it as we have my robot friends come help me. So I have a repo that has a directory of DAGs. And in it, there is a DAG, its unit test, and also outside of that directory, there's a requirements file. And this is just your typical Python requirements file. It has all of the Python modules my DAG needs to successfully run. All right, so what does my life look like with my robot friends helping out? It starts out the same. The Airflow maintainers release a new version of a provider package that I want to PyPI, the Python package index. Only instead of me listening for it, this is where my first robot friend comes in. And this robot friend is called RenovateBot. Let me tell you what I need to make RenovateBot successful. I start by introducing this new requirements file. I call it requirements-composer, but you can call it whatever you want. It lives in the GitHub repo where I store my DAG so I can keep track of it and use version control. Um, and it's just another requirements file, only instead of being the requirements that my DAG needs to run, it's the Python modules that I want installed in my composer environment. So in this, I have all of the packages, in this case, the one package I want to add to my environment, and that is the backport Google provider package. I pinned to a specific version of it because that is best practice when you are using a dependency bot to keep your dependencies up to date. It allows you to know for sure what version of a dependency you're running in your environment. The next thing I need is a configuration file. I specifically am using white source renovate bot because that is what we use for our other GCP samples. But I know there are other dependency bots out there. 
It has a JSON config. I extend the base one, and then I have a few changes. One, I point out that my base branch is called main. Yours might be called dev or something else, and you'd want to specify that here. And I tell it to look at our newly created re uh, requirements-composer.txt file. By default, it will already be looking out for that other requirements file, but because this is a non-standard name, I need to call it out explicitly here. So now, instead of me updating, my robot friend opens up a PR proposing this update to that requirements-composer.txt file. So the next thing that would happen would be that I would test this package uh, with my dad locally. And this is where I have my next robot friend. I specifically use Cloud Build to automate this. In order to run my unit tests, I start by creating a Docker file so that I can make a container image to run in Cloud Build. In that Docker file, I install all of the relevant dependencies and I run my test command for my DAGs. I then need to configure my bot friend with a YAML file. That is what Cloud Build specifically needs to be configured. And this one I call test DAGs uh, in case I have more than one Cloud Build uh, bot that is set up. In that YAML file, I have two steps that are specified. The first builds my Docker image, and it's tagged using some default substitutions, and I use the commit SHA as a UUID. And then the second step runs that container image, which, if you remember, is running those tests. I could add an additional step to store this image in artifact registry or another package registry of my choice. Um, I just choose not to do it here because I don't really need it any other time. So then I follow the instructions for Cloud Build to create what's called a trigger, which is to tell the robot when it should do its job. So this Cloud Build bot, it triggers on a pull request in my repository when it's a pull request that's against my main branch. And it triggers every time it opens, uh, not just when a user comments, hello, robot friend, please run, or whatever the actual uh, Cloud Build command is. Um, and then it runs those two steps that are in that YAML file. So what that looks like is when my renovate bot friend opens a PR to my repo, my pre-submit tests run, and I can look at it as a human and say, oh, sweet, they're passing. And that's my next step. So previously, where I would need to make this proposal and show that my tests were passing, the robot looks, makes the proposal, shows me the tests are passing, and then I can approve it and merge that change to my environment dependencies to main. My next step previously was then I would update the Python modules in my Composer Airflow environment. And this is where Cloud Build is going to come around again, only it's another instance of Cloud Build. This time, I don't even need a Docker file. I just need to make that Cloud Build YAML file, and I give it a name that shows me what it's doing, which in this case is updating Composer. In it, there is one step, and I invoke the GCP command line uh, command that updates a Composer environment. And for a Cloud Composer, you can pass it a requirements file of the Python modules you want to install. And in this case, that is that requirements-composer.txt file. So at this point, we have my robot has opened the PR. I've said yes. And now we want my other robot friend to call this command to update my environment. And I need to tell it when to do that. And so I make that cloud build trigger. Only this time, unlike my last cloud build job, uh, which triggers every time a pull request is opened, this one triggers every time there is a change in my main branch to that requirements-composer.txt file. I don't want it to run every time there's a change to the main branch, because that would be excessive and completely unnecessary. So that's why we specify only do it on this file. At this point, my dev environment has those changes to that backport package. And it's time for me, a human, to look and see, does everything look OK? And if it does, then I promote my changes to prod. And I have that as a human job instead of a bot job on purpose. This is where I want some human oversight and where I can make decisions and look to see if anything's kind of funky. So let's put it all together. What happens is, just like before, an update to the provider package was made and pushed to the Python package index. My friend RenovateBot looks at it, sees that there was an update, and makes a PR to my repo. My friend Cloud Build runs my pre-submit tests. They pass, so I approve that PR that makes the change to my requirements-composer file. Once that change is merged into the main branch, my other Cloud Build robot friend updates my dev-composer environment. 
Once I see that my DAGs are looking happy and healthy, I promote that same change to prod manually. So some improvements that I can make, I need a better rollback strategy. If something were to go wrong in dev, I currently don't have it automated that it reverts the PR in GitHub. It's not super getting in my way right now, so I may explore it in the future for fun, but I don't need to yet. I would also like to include more system tests. And I want to explore using some other components. I have tried it with GitHub uh, Actions, and it works pretty well. Um, and I'd like to maybe explore trying out Dependabot, which is a different dependency bot option as well. Some more resources if you're interested in this. There was a great talk on testing at the Airflow Summit last year, and I wrote all of this in a blog post for you with links to this code. So if you go to this bit.ly link, you can get access to the slides where you can then click on the links. Thank you for attending this session, and I hope you enjoy your rest of the time at the Airflow Summit.